As mentioned earlier, measuring radiative quantities is a rather difficult business. It becomes more complicated when it's done from a satellite moving at around 28,000 km per hour around the Earth and when the target is about 400 to 800 km below with the dynamic atmosphere in between. This clip will give you an idea how we make sure that one of the basic quantities that we can measure from space, the surface reflectance, is measured as correctly as possible. For the validation of spectral surface properties, we use the same technology as on satellites, spectral radiometers. Specifically for validation, we prefer hyperspectral sensors that cover the spectral range from 350 to 2500 nanometers. This makes it possible to simulate virtually all optical Earth observation sensors. The platform on which the instrument is mounted has a large effect on how large an area we can be covered. Field spectrometers or spectrometers on towers can only observe points, while sensors on planes can cover a relatively large area. The careful calibration of these sensors is very important to get a reliable observation that can be used as ground truth. Comparable to vicarious calibration, it is generally good to have large homogeneous areas for surface reflectance validation. The size should be proportional to the satellite pixel size to be certain that the site is representative for the satellite measurement. As a rule of thumb, the site has to be three to five times larger than the pixel size of the satellite data. Sites can be for example deserts, salt lakes or even snow-covered places. If a site should be permanently used for validation, automatic spectral radiometers can be installed. However, there are not many locations in the world where these high-quality sensors have been installed already. Additionally, it is very difficult to establish new sites because they need to be homogeneous. For example, MODIS pixels have one kilometer site length, which means a site measuring approximately 5 by 5 kilometers needs to be found. Recent developments in surface reflectance validation are the formation of networks of sites. These require a range of ground sites for validation that cover different surface properties, but also multiple aerosol types that impact the atmospheric correction in different ways. Two good examples are the Radkal net that requires sites to have high-end equipment to measure atmospheric properties, as well as Hypernet, where the focus is purely on surface reflectance. Another recent trend is the use of unoccupied airborne vehicles or drones. Validation with drones is only now possible because high-quality miniaturized sensors are becoming available. Drones allow us to cover larger areas than point sampling and are comparable to what satellite sensors see. Additionally, they require less investments than traditionally piloted aircrafts. In this clip, you learned how surface reflectance is measured, the importance of validation sites and recent trends in surface reflectance validation.